Welcome to another healing conversation brought to you by AcousticHealth.com. I'm Loren Gailey, and today we are talking about how to tap into our human potential and harness the power that's within us. My guest is master yoga teacher Tao Porshan Lynch, founder of Westchester Institute of Yoga. At a youthful 93 years young, Tao is confirmation that following the principles of yoga and positive thinking can heal yourself and also heal the planet. Now this radio show limits the visual aspect of seeing Tao in action, so I suggest that you check her out online. She's got lots of YouTube videos out there where you can see her performing yoga which she still teaches numerous classes a week, and she also is an award-winning, world-class dancer. You can see her videos and vitality online. Tao has overcome the effects of aging to control her body and mind, and she's here to tell us today that there is nothing we cannot do if we harness the power within us. Welcome to Healing Conversations, Tao. Thank you very much. You are someone who is still very quite busy in your life. Can you tell us what your daily routine is? Well, I'm usually up at five o'clock every morning, and I often, at least three times a week, I leave here by 7.30 and, uh, and teach yoga. And uh, then I come back, and um, I, um, I start again, and I dance. And uh, then I have more yoga, usually at night. So I, I, I sort of mix it up. I awake with the sun because uh, I, I love the sun and I, I think I love nature. And I like to feel that I'm awakening with, like springtime is here now. Uh, just a couple of weeks, or hardly a couple of weeks ago, all the trees and everything were dead. And they looked uh, like, uh, um, you know, um, pictures of, um, of dying things in the ground and suddenly spring is here and it's I have never seen a spring beautiful as this one the flowers and the leaves and the blossoms on the trees really tell us something that right away we can reharness we can recycle our own being and that we should never give in to anything except to wake up and know that it's going to be a wonderful day. And so waking up every day, there's no room for any fear anywhere, and that could be a big lesson for people. What do you do to keep yourself free and clear of fear? But I don't believe in fear. I think whatever you put in your mind and manifests, materializes. So I always wake up with looking for the good, and I, I, it sounds silly, I know, but I, I found a long time ago that the, the first thing that I should do is tune in to my inner self, my inner breath, because actually the breath is the life force flowing through you. So it's a creation of life within us, and if we can feel it, we can see it in the sun rising up and transferring the night into a beautiful day. So the same thing, we can recycle our own body. And if we look for the good, that's what will happen. It will materialize. Quantum physics is now proving what your lifetime has proven to you. It has, you know, there's so much here. You turn on sometimes the TV and they talk only about all the things bad that are going to happen if you don't do this and don't do that. And I don't, I, I don't do that. I, I wake up and I see the wonderful little birds all around me chattering away and happy that the new day started. Or a, a beautiful flock of geese. And I'm wondering, where are they going? How do they know how to get there? Mm. And so I really believe that nature is my encyclopedia, the encyclopedia of life. And when we can feel this energy within ourselves, 
then we know that we're on the right track. This is the, the journey of life, so it should be a good one. And I just believe that nothing's impossible. Just tune in and know there's nothing you can't do. It, the power is right in every breath you take is the power of life. So I try to live by that. I really don't have to try because I laugh with the sun and feel it making me really happy and know that I'm going to see a lot of wonderful people and I'm going to see the beauty of life all around me. Now you've had an incredible journey. You grew up in India and France and that Indian influence is really where you learned yoga. When I started yoga, I just saw boys doing it. And I, 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 I uh, was told by my aunt that it wasn't ladylike. And uh, I said, if they can do it, I can do it too. I started like that. But if you really must do, the person who really put it in my mind and in my heart was Mahatma Gandhi. I met him one day. My uncle had a habit of bringing people in if they thought they were not eating or something. And, and one day I saw this funny little man sitting there and everybody bowing to him. He didn't realize who he was. And um, his whole theory was that we were all born free. That we were all one without a question that all belong to the same family and, that we, and we should live and practice not by words, but by actions, what we believed. And so I marched with Gandhi in 1939. And uh, I think that, that put me on the right track. And I see everybody in this world who has that positiveness, not a, a vicious positiveness, but a positive to create something beautiful and, and look for the beauty in everything. It's, it's there easy to find. Just take a breath and feel it within your heart. As it pulsates inside of you, it takes you on the right path. It opens the door to everything for you. But the word yoga comes from the Sanskrit word yug, meaning to join the body, the mind, and the spirit. So whatever you put in that brain of yours, make sure that as you come out of this physical body, that you're now on a path to open up the secret of life. It's right there within you. That's what, to me, that's what yoga means. That knowing within you, even when you deal with, let's say, Western medical doctors, you are still the one at char in charge. You are still the one who will take their information and take it into your heart and see if that sits right for you. Can you share that story of your hip replacement and how you kept on with your heart, not letting in what someone else may have thought, like your medical doctor? Yes, my medical doctor is a very sweet person, and she, she said to me that you haven't been in for a checkup in three years. I said, but I don't need one. He said, everybody needs a checkup. I said, well, I don't feel that way, but I'll come in just because you're so nice and have one. And as long as you tell, you don't tell me all the things that are wrong, I'm only interested in the things that I can do. I'm not interested in anything that is negative. So she laughed, and she she still laughs at me. I feel that we, if I, if I really put in my mind that what is there for me, even my husband used to say to me, how it doesn't matter what the calamity is, you say something good will happen. I truly believe that if we look for the good, it will come. It will, it will materialize. So I, I would always use this. And um, I found it was easier to smile at everybody, and they smiled back. But if you looked grumpy and said hi, they didn't say anything back to you. So I, I, I really I try to share what I feel, 
and my students are so incredible that uh, just going in and seeing them opens the door to another day of joy. I know you work teaching many students for many years. You've been doing yoga for 70 years, teaching for 45 and, and more. And when you see people awaken to this, what is that like for you? It's a jewel. It's the best thing that you, that's what yoga represents. To see an expression on someone's face who doesn't think they can do something and they realize they can there's no, no greater gift that any of my students can give me than to know that they can go and do something and they're not going to hurt themselves, but they're going to follow it through and then just stop a moment, take a breath, and let the Creator help you get through whatever you have to do. Let's talk a little bit about that spark of energy, that primal spark of energy within us. Yes, the spark of energy. You know, we're composed of the earth. When we, when we don't breathe anymore, we go back to the earth. But when we feel and experience our own heartbeat, and as we listen to it, we realize that everything on this planet pulsates with the same energy as I have in my heart. It's in a blade of grass. It's in everything. It's, it's in every piece of fruit that I eat. It's, it's as though the sun has brought it out of the earth for us, especially. And so I, I, I don't worry about uh, what I can't do or this or that. I know that the, the real answer will come when I'm in tune and listening, listen inside of you. The Creator is not somewhere out in space, it's right inside. As I say, the moment it leaves you, then then we're, we're, we die. And uh, as long as we are on this earth, there's, there's lots of wonderful things to live for. And I've had people say, well, it's all right for you, you know, but if you're our age, because I have a bad habit of always wearing high heel shoes, Mm -hmm. and feeling ready to dance. And uh, so this, I said, well, how old are you? And this girl would tell me, oh, well, I'm 68, I'm 72, and the oldest was 77. And I said, well, that's good, uh, because uh, you're all my children, because I was 89. Mm -hmm. so it, uh, they looked at me, and what happened was they tried, they didn't, uh, just, you know, fade away and say, I'm not going to do it. They suddenly decided they wanted to try and do some yoga with me. So if that's the right door to open up for all of us. Open the door to help other people. Open the door to help ourselves. I want to make sure that this power in helping others I want to help myself so that people can see within me that power. The same thing inside of me. Not just me as a person, but me as, as part of that creation. And so I want to help myself as well. Here we are in 2012. This year has been looked at from so many different angles. Yes. What do you teach your students? What's the main lesson? What? Well, don't, don't just jump out of bed. Just pause a moment. Go and look outside. If that's not good, just go and look inside of your own self. And, and uh, I think that um, then they'll face the, the world with, without fear. And so the yoga practice allows you to really get into your body. As you said, the yug is joining the body, mind, and spirit. And that's happening in the body. It is. It, uh, every pulse beat of your heart, every pulse beat of your heart is the creation of life. So don't be scared. Don't be scared. Know that within you is the power to do anything you want to do. Just know the power of a, of a smile. 
and know also that this is going to be the best day of your life, and it will be. And know that it, it beats in every atom, it beats in every little insect, the same heartbeat as ours. And if we're all together, the world is going to be a beautiful place. I, I hope, I, I'm sorry, I, I'm rushing you. I, 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 I tried to change it, and I had, I, I think they couldn't change it, so I got stuck. Well, thank you so much, Tao. What amazing inspiration that you are shining for so many others. It really is an inspiration, and we so enjoy watching you and having our heart beat with yours. Well, bless you, and I'm, I am blessed that you're doing so much to bring this to other people, that you're doing just as much as I am. Tao, thank you. One last thing about your career. You were an actress in England and France and India. You helped bring television to India. Would you say that because of your yoga introduction or your yoga philosophy, that that's what made your life as well, just flourish and tap into your greatness? I, 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 I think yoga is the dance of life. So it's not only, it's the dance of the eternal life within us. The same dance that I'm going to do, I also dance and move into it. And everybody, it's wide open for everyone, not just me, just everyone in this world. It's wonderful that you dance every day because that lifts your spirit like singing for others. So we just need to do this in our lives. Yes, absolutely. And everything will be wonderful, really. Thank you so much for joining us on Healing Conversations, Tao, Portion, Lynch. Thank you. Thank you so much. We're back for another Healing Conversation on this finale day of the Summer Series 2012. Our next guest is here to talk about longevity. Ella Crony is the author of Forever Young. Her book appeals primarily to flight attendants and pilots and how flight attendants and pilots can improve their health after many hours on a flight on a plane. In fact, we know that flight attendants and pilots are limited in the amount of hours that they can be in the air each month. We're going to talk about why that is, why you may be affected by flying, and what you can do in a sense to reduce the negativity from that and bring in a better lifestyle. I'd love to welcome Ella Crony. Thank you for being on Healing Conversations. Well, thank you, Lauren, for having me. Now, what inspired you to write your book? Lauren, I was inspired because I started my job as a flight attendant 23 years ago. But I came in, 20, uh, 25 years ago I started on uh, the path of alternative approaches because I helped a girlfriend at the time who had breast cancer. She wanted to uh, find alternative treatments. She refused chemo or radiation. And that was 25 years ago when you didn't hear about a lot of alternatives. Yeah, pretty bold. Yeah, it was very bold. And I really believed in her. She was a very good friend. I believed in her. And so I used my resources at the time. Uh, at that time, I was actually a stockbroker. And I had clients who were research scientists. So I contacted some of these guys, and I said, hey, you know, you guys know more about um, these pharmaceuticals before they become pharmaceuticals. You know about herbs and plants. I said, how can I help my friend who, tr who really believes in a way to, uh, that there's a way to heal her cancer? And these guys uh, really made some good connections for me. And uh, they uh, originally connected me with uh, some tea called Asiac tea through uh, Native Americans. 
Mm. And in, literally, I, I um, flew to Seattle, uh, met with a tribal le- leader, and he put together, I mean, these herbs were, when I say raw, they were uh, in two big bags of, 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 of herbs. And I had, at the time, he gave me two glass brown bottles that they used to have years ago, and they had corks on them. He told me how to mix this tea for my girlfriend. And uh, he said, you know, it's going to take four hours, so you need to do this for her because it's going to really drain her, but it's really going to detox. Well, to make a, um, to make a long story short, uh, my, my friend got on these teas, and from there we went to um, Mexico, and she started working with the Gershon therapy and some other formulas, and they were all herbal. Well... She stayed in Mexico for two months. I picked her up two months later. And Lauren, she looked literally 10 years younger. I was shocked. Her awesome. energy was back. Her uh, And my friend is like, she has that real uh, porcelain skin because she's Italian-American. Mm-hmm. Her pink, the pinkness was back in her skin. Her eyes were shining. She had stories to tell me about it. I, I was just amazed. So what it, it uh, and of course, it, uh, a cancer w- was in remission. I mean, they just, it was, I'm going to say in remission because that's the correct thing to say, but the truth is. It's gone. It, it was just, it, they couldn't find traces of it. Now, this was two months? And that was her being staying in Mexico and using these herbs and going through these methods for two months. Yes. And so I said to myself, it, it really warped my brain. I mean, it was like, mm-hmm. wait a minute. Yeah. If something this major, because yeah. to me that's major, and I think to anybody that is, yes. can, um, can be wiped out. Because so really, in my mind, I think it was wiped out. It was, it was cleaned out. It was detoxed. Uh, what can we do as preventative? So I literally started taking classes and following these research scientists and listening to them talk about the different herbs and things that were out there from other countries that are not mainstream. Mm -hmm. And so I had all this information. I've had it for years and I've used it. And when I became a flight attendant, uh, all of a sudden people would just, you know, started asking me, well, how is it that your energy is still good after a flight and we're white? And I thought, you know, I don't know. And I, and I said, well, wait a minute. I use milk thistle. And so let me share why milk thistle is important, because it helps to cleanse the liver, which is the major blood reservoir. Now, this filters toxins every minute. And so, you know, just something as simple as getting these flight attendants to try milk thistle, something they've never heard of, Mm -hmm. and then the pilots started trying it, and all of a sudden they're like, you know what, I'm feeling better after my flight. Now, this took, you know, a couple of weeks for them to start using it, but this is real important for people who travel. And there are, you know, we've got business travelers who do go through the same thing. They're exhausted after a flight, and they haven't done anything but sit down. <laughs> <laughs> now, why is that? Is that because there's less oxygen on the plane? or? Yes. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, it's less oxygen. Within 20 minutes of getting on the airplane, the door closing, there's, you no longer have the outside air. So now you're working with recirculated oxygen, and you're also working with more radiation. So you're getting 30 times more radiation than people on the ground. We'll talk about the radiation in a moment, but for the oxygen, how come there are no plants on an airplane? There are no plants? Plants, right? (laughs) Because plants breathe out carbon dioxide. So it just makes us wonder... You know, about airplanes, I mean, is there a way to put oxygen tanks? If they have oxygen masks, why wouldn't the planes put oxygen streaming through the air? 
You know, that is a great question. And the bottom line is, it's all about money. Yes. It really is. It's sad. So you, as an individual, you have to do what it takes to take care of yourself when you're up there. Okay, now, so now, okay, go ahead. Well, some really good things for radiation. I got a flight attendant on kelp. Kelp is real important for people who travel because, and especially in a capsule as a form of algae, it's really good when you use kelp because it flushes radiation. So you drink a lot of water when you're there on the airplane and you use kelp. You can take the kelp before you go, before you leave, before you get on the airplane. And if you're really smart, to take one, you know, that evening when you get home. Uh, these, these things are simple and very inexpensive, but they have helped tremendously with flying. And then, Lauren, you have people who just don't like supplements at all. And so for them, a fun thing and a very easy thing is in the bathtub, you can mix two cups of baking soda and two cups of Epsom salt in the bathtub for 30 minutes. When you mix those two together, they create a chemical reaction that pulls toxins and radiation through the skin. Okay. So you're flushing this out through your skin in the bath. It's very safe. And that, you know, that's great for people who don't like taking supplements. Well, I love that we can go and relax from a trip and a flight in the bathtub in your hotel or wherever your destination is. That's a great way to relax and revive yourself pretty quickly. Yes. The important thing for people to know, Lauren, is that it doesn't cost a lot to take care of yourself, but you must do it. Yes, no one's going to do it for us. No one. And I believe for anyone, not just flight personnel, detoxing twice a year is very important. And in my book, on chap in Chapter 4, I give about three or four different options for people to use uh, as detoxing solutions. And I give them the website so they know where to get these products online or at their local health food store. Okay, so now detox twice a year, three or yes. four methods to do that. Do you recommend that people fast? There's ways that you can fast and have no food or just do juice or lemonade or some people can maybe just go to light foods like quinoa and vegetables and do a cleanse while they're still in taking food. What are your thoughts on this? You know, um, fasting is, is something that I would not do unless they have a good uh, chiropractor who does muscle testing, applied kinesiology. Ah, yes. Or, or, um, or, or a naturopath who does that. And let me tell you why. Because our body types are so different, they really are. One person can fast, do a juice fast all day, and it doesn't affect them. Another person can hit a sugar low half, uh, you know, within half that period of time and get really sick. Mm -hmm. and, and, and the reason, Lauren, is because um, when you do a fast, remember your body, if you haven't done any kind of detoxing before, uh, all of a sudden that body wants to, it's going to try to detox too fast. Mm -hmm. Headaches and with, with, all of that, and people, you know, talk about getting a headache, getting uh, dizzy, all those things. And so, someone who is not already on the path uh, of doing cleansing and things like that regularly, I would not suggest uh, a, a straight juice bath. Whereas doing the um, bath, uh, the you know, eating light vegetables throughout the day and doing juicing. And also either a colonic that same evening or uh, enema that evening. Very, very important. Mm -hmm. Whereas these herbs that we're talking about that you detox with, they are actually safer because you build up, you know, you build them up. 
Um, you know, you might start with two a day, and then the next day you might do two in the morning and two at night, and each, you know, each system tells you how to use it. Uh, and then the, so the body, and then you gradually uh, eat less. Uh, you know, the days that you're going to do your cleansing, let's say you decide to do a cleansing, a five-day cleanse, well, that five-day cleanse, then you're purposely going to eat more uh, greens, more vegetables, and preferably more juicing. And that's real important. I talk also about um, wheatgrass. Wheatgrass is so powerful, and, you know, and you don't need a whole lot of, of the wheatgrass for it to do its job. Really? Just a shot a day of maybe two tablespoons? Well, I tell you what, if, you, if you're doing like a cleanse, mm -hmm. then you're going to want to do more. The, the good thing about wheatgrass is, now, you know, the best way to get it is, is at the health food store. They juice it for you right there and you drink the shot, you know, a two-ounce shot. But they have really good powders at the health food store that are pure wheatgrass. And that's what you would like to, what it would be good for you to buy to have at home. Now, the cool thing about wheatgrass is it actually helps to stop sugar cravings. Mm. So I've gotten a lot of like, you know, um, there, at different times, especially at high stressful times, it's during the holidays when you have family around, you're cooking more, you're eating more, the whole works. You want to enjoy yourself. But what happens after the New Year? It's actually more difficult to get back into the groove. Well, the perfect way to do that is come January, start tripling up on your wheatgrass. So have your wheatgrass shot. You know, like at home, if you have the powder, you would put actually two uh, teaspoons and four ounces of water. Okay. And you would and you would have that before your breakfast, before your lunch, before your dinner. So try to have it brief. And if you can't have it before breakfast and lunch and dinner, at least have it in the morning when you wake up and have it when you get home from work and then again at, at night when you go to bed. And after about three days, it buffers the system and you just stop having sugar cravings. Just in three days, so it's like just it, it, focus. Yeah, it, it, it may take someone else, you know, four or five days just because they've eaten tons of sugar. But people who don't eat tons of sugar, it takes them about three days of using the wheatgrass three times a day. And uh, it's going to give you back all those nutrients and your body, the cravings are just, no, they're gone. I love that. Yes, that's good. So that's the wheatgrass solution to combat sugar sugar yes. cravings let's go back to the detox i wanted to ask you what's your favorite quick and easy short way to detox well i'm going to choose a cleansing formula that i like because you build up on it and it, it is not quick but it actually starts working within about three days okay and um it's is um, nature's, it's a group of herbs and called nature's secrets. And what it consists of is uh, AM, PM. Uh, it's a group of herbs and, they're, and it's called AM, PM set of herbs. And it starts you off slowly, two different bottles. And you take one, so one of each in the morning. And one has a blend of herbs that detoxifies the body, whereas the second one has a blend of herbs and fibers for the digestive system. And you start off with one of each per day. Then you work your way up. Now, you may only work your way up to two twice a day, and you only do this in the morning and the evening. But by the third day, you've got this energy like you can't believe. Because <clears throat> this particular blend of herbs, it supports the detoxifying process, but it also supports the digestive system and elimination system. 
Mm-hmm. Now, if someone wanted to lose weight, this product is absolutely amazing, and they would actually stay on this product for a month. Okay, but if someone just wanted to do some uh, detoxing and cleansing and not have it to be too difficult on the body, because, you know, some, this is very important for people to know, and I, and especially people who fly, some herbal formulas, detox formulas, you cannot take while you, while you fly <laughs> because they really, really flush you. You're in the you're in the in the restroom too often. Yeah, you have to be close to a restroom. <laughs> yes. have, so it's much better to be grounded with some formulas, and they work very well. But this particular product, Nature Secrets, can be found at any health food store, and um, it's just it's one of the it's really one of the best ones that works with you, and it works subtle, so it. It's not something that's going to shock you all of a sudden and, you know, the next thing you know, you, you're going to have to call in sick because uh-huh. I'm feeling good. So uh, things like that are important just because they build, they help to build up the system and while they're cleansing. So that would be by far one of my favorite ones because it's not too hard on the body. Now, what is your daily regime and is it does it change throughout the year? You said... You know, after New Year's, you do the wheatgrass. But what is your daily, for the most part, your daily regime? Um, I like um, protein powder because I can mix, like, the milk thistle. Uh, I, I add a probiotic in there. And if I feel like it, I put in my yogurt. But sometimes I just wait and eat my yogurt later. Um I'm real big on Greek yogurt, but I can't take that or I can't get it when I'm on the road. But at home, I can have my Greek yogurt. On the road, uh, you know, I'm pretty much at the mercy of a health food store if there's one close to any of the hotels. And, you know, we always stay at really nice hotels, but they don't carry, you know, health food products. So I bring what I can, and uh, and I just work with what I have. Now, I am real big with organic vegetables, fruits and vegetables, yes. mainly because you get 15 times more more uh, nutrition. So um, I, I can't do anything as to no one when they're traveling because, again, you're at the mercy of being in hotels, eating in restaurants. And mind you, the restaurants are nice restaurants, but they're not organic. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. People, Lauren, people like to tell me, and it doesn't fly with me anymore, and I won't let them get away with it, but people try to tell me that it costs too much for them to eat organic. That is not true at all. It costs too much for people to get sick. Yes, if you look at it that way. They really need to look at it the, the way it really is, Lauren, mm-hmm. because if you're eating food that is not giving you the nutritional value that you need to take care of your body temple, you will pay later on, and it will be a big price to pay. Nobody comes out of those hospitals with small bills. So that $5 gallon of organic milk, it's worth it. And, and your local farmers, if you have farmers mark, markets, you know, a lot of people have those, you know, during the week, on Fridays, on Saturdays. Try to support your local farmers uh, because you can talk to them and find out what they're using. They're going to tell you the truth because they want you to come back because they want this is what they do. And you, and, you don't have to buy food that travels across a whole continent. And it leaves one, you know, and that's pretty amazing, Lauren. I can be in Seattle, Washington, and go in the grocery store, and there's apples from California. And I can be in California and go to the grocery store, and there's apples from Washington State. <laughs> because it's and business. So, it's no, business. No. Yeah, it's vegetable brokering. It's it's the food business. Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. But, but, but unfortunately, they don't care about your health. It's, I'm sorry to say it, but you have to be you have to be concerned about your family and your health, and you have to believe that you are worthy enough 
to spend this little extra money now. You know, a friend was saying, yes, but if my, uh, you know, lettuce is, you know, a, do- a dollar at the grocery store, but it's a dollar fifty, if, and it's organic, and I'm just throwing that out there. And she's saying, well, when I add it up, you know, if I keep adding 50 and 50, 50 cents more, 50 cents more, she said, I walk out of the store and I said, you know, maybe $15 more than I would if it wasn't organic. And I said, okay. I said, and then what happens when you, when you get sick? Tell me how much more the hospital bill costs. Yes, exactly. Or tell me, or tell me how much more the doctor's visit costs. Because you've got to pay to walk in the door, even with your insurance. You still have to pay to walk in the door. Yeah, the copay costs more than that money you just spent. <laughs> and you know, fifteen dollars extra to put something good in your body. Um, you know, fifteen dollars—that's someone going out to a movie. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. it's just how we prioritize. And I think well, you know, you, you're stating a really strong case to just change your thought form on how much you spend on food and move away from the lowest price point. First know what you want when you go into the store. Yes, and and something else is very important and I've been uh, slowly, because more and more uh, flight attendants and pilots over the years have asked me about meditation and why it's important, you know, because I, I get compliments on how calm I am when I have flights that they show up stressful, but, you know, I kind of do my own little little meditation thing and nobody knows it, but the flight turns around and the next thing you know, we're having a great time. And I've, I've you know, gotten really good compliments from pilots and flight attendants over the years and shared with them why it's important for you to meditate the body temple. What we're talking about with the food, with the herbs, uh, and, and the meditation, these things are for our body temples to hold more light and to resonate at a higher vibration. And literally, we can change the vibration of the, the people around us or the, the field of energy that we're in by lifting it up and um, helping people feel better. Well, you know, Lauren, you can't make people feel better when you don't feel good. <laughs> mm-hmm, exactly. But, but we certainly, it's very easy for me to to help you feel better when I'm feeling good. Because I guess what? I want you to feel good, too. <laughs> well, give me a story of when a flight was in, maybe the passengers were kind of testy or grouchy. It doesn't happen often, but it does happen. When, uh, uh, I'm going to say... I did a flight to Mexico, and we got there. We were actually just, we were not going to overnight. We're doing a flight, and we're coming back. And we picked our passengers up, got everybody on board, and comes to find out someone, uh, a family, was uh, at the airport. And uh, one of the children's uh, uh, passports had expired. So we had to... With our passengers on board, everybody is on board except this family. Uh, and, you know, all of a sudden you're in, a, you're in another country, so they have to go through what they have to go through. Meanwhile, you have to keep the passengers calm that are with you because they're ready to go, and we are too. Yeah. But you can't because you can't leave these children in a foreign country. And um, so, of course, the captain comes on and explains what's going on. And I gather up the flight attendant, and I, uh, you know, I said, okay, you know, let's, let's on the ground, we've, we've got them on the ground, the, air, the airplane's cool, let's give them some drinks. Meanwhile, get really fast, it, because most of the crews know me and we work together, I just, you know, say, okay, let's do this. Everybody, I, I have some ginkgo, let's feel good, let's get our oxygen level up. <laughs> Now, the cool thing about ginkgo is, you know, it kind of fires up the brain and stimulates you. You've got more energy. And just to make everybody feel good, and actually a lot of these flight attendants I work with have this stuff already on them. Mm -hmm. Uh, And then, you know, we just talk about let's let's just give them some drinks on the ground and let them have fun. Now, you know, 
Again, you don't announce it. You just walk through and you take care of everybody. Meanwhile, on my own, I actually go into the laboratory and for two seconds, and it takes just that, you know, that quick, ask for divine assistance. I love angels working with me. Mm. And they do. They show up. I mean, the next thing you know, people were grouchy, and, and within minutes, they're feeling great because the flight attendants are walking through. We're feeling good. We're talking to them. It's going to be a few minutes, you know. We just don't want to leave the family and their kid because of what's going on. And people have compassion when you talk to them. You give them something to drink. Uh, it doesn't take a lot to, to turn things around. That we have is that wonderful. power. We, and do. We, we, have, we have to do it together and collectively, and it changes everything. And it literally did. Yes, just by those two seconds of asking for that guidance. Asking, yes. asking. Asking. You know, everyone is looking at the flight attendants. If the flight attendants are cool, they know yeah. they're cool, especially in turbulence. <laughs> well, you know what's fun, Lauren, is um, on the way to the hotel, we actually park it at one, at, you know, one spot, and then we, we catch, a, a, like, a hotel bus to the airport. Mm-hmm. And so we're on the bus with other people going somewhere. Now, we don't know where they're going because we're all going to the airport, but they're getting off at different terminals. Mm -hmm. But the drivers, they all know us, and, of course, the people on the bus know we're flight attendants because we're, we're in uniform. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, we get on the, on the bus, hello to, you know, Padre, Leo. We know these guys, and within minutes, these passengers who, who, we don't know where they're going, they look it up and they say, we want to be on your flight. <laughs> <laughs> That's good energy. That's good that is, energy. That is so much fun. Mm -hmm. You know, they look, and it happens all the time. And so um, you're in such a great place to be around so many people. You do come across a lot of people in your life. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. And, and they're all going through a lot. You know, you don't know what people are going through. None of us do. Uh, none of us do, Lauren. You know, sometimes people come on and they appear to be irritated and angry. And, you know, within minutes of talking to them, you find out their mother just died. Yes. You no, know? I mean, and I mean, so if you had taken it the wrong way uh, without, without just, you know, talking to them and trying, you know, trying to find out or, you know, What's going on here? Because sometimes they come off really short and blunt. And I mean, I've had times when the male flight attendants have come up to me and said, "Hey, you know, because I'm a female, mm -hmm. you know, can, would you talk to this guy? We're having a difficult time with him, and we want to kind of get, keep things calm before they escalate. But they're, it's already getting close." Oh. And I, and I have yeah, and I've gone step back and gone to the back cabin, and uh, and that was one great example. I, you know, I actually, you know, squatted down near the guy's feet, and I said, you know, are, are you okay? Is everything okay? And, you know, my flight attendants are a little concerned. Uh, they want to make sure they haven't upset you uh, or, or done anything wrong because uh, it, they were just having exchanging, you know, bad vibes, mm -hmm. the, 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 you know, the passenger and the flight attendant. And the guy looked at me and grabbed my hand, and he said he was going home to bury his mother. Yeah. And he said, I didn't know. He said, I'm so sorry. I didn't know I was being rude. And, you know, just like that. People can be under a lot of stress and different. There's also fear. Some people could be very fearful of flying. Yes, yes. And uh, I'm glad you brought that up uh, because of stress. Something's really good for people who fly, people who know they're going to be getting on an airplane, is B complex. And the reason is, is because B complex helps the nervous system. And remember, you've got B1 in B complex. It, it consists of B1 and B6, and these are uh, this is the necessary production of GABA, and that's a main calming neurotransmitter for the brain. Mm -hmm. And I share that information uh, in Chapter 5, because, uh, and it's all on stress, 
because I want people to have options when they know they're going to be flying. And uh, it's just, it, that's something that I automatically put in my protein drink every morning. You know, I just open up to, to be complex um, capsules and just it, it goes right into my protein drink. But for someone who, does, who uh, it's not a part of their daily routine, if they know they're going to fly, you know, pick up some B-complex. We're talking about something at the health food store that costs you $4, you know. <laughs> mm-hmm. I mean, how wonderful is it to have these things around when you need them or when you know you're going into, an, an, let's say you're going into a work situation that you know it's going to have some high stress because you, you're working with different groups that are coming together. I mean, go ahead. Use your B-complex before to calm your nervous system. Is there any way that anybody can take too much of these? You know, it, that is, it's quite possible. Uh, but I'm going to say most of the people that I've worked with already have or they now are working with chiropractors who do uh, muscle testing. Mm-hmm. Or they work with acupuncture doctors. That's real important. Uh, and so these other um, alternative doctors actually help to let them know the amount that's good for them. Uh, that, you know, as, far, as, as opposed to you, to me taking two a day, and someone else may need two twice a day. Yeah, that muscle testing does a lot. It does answer. a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, now, what is real good for bone health, and I'd like to share this because, you know, a lot of people know about calcium and magnesium, but people aren't aware that taking vitamin D at night is beneficial because it gets the calcium absorbed into the small intestines and the bloodstream. Mm. Yes, so I share that. You know, in my book, I love this stuff. And, and of course, you know, vitamin D is the sunshine vitamin. <laughs> yes, and you can go get that with sun, but you're saying to take some supplements as well. Yes, yes. Okay. This, this vitamin D, vitamin D is really good to take at night because it supports the blood, uh, the small intestines. It gets the calcium into the small intestines and the bloodstream. So now you're talking about supporting your bone health. Again, I like sharing these small, these tips that are inexpensive. They don't break the bank. We can do this, Lauren. We can be the change that we want to see and cure of ourselves and not break the bank. Also now with coconut oil, and you can take off makeup with coconut oil. Yes, I do. I do, and I actually put a. Te- I have the. I get the jar uh, because I put a teaspoon of coconut oil in my protein drink. It is so good for your skin. It is amazing. It's good amazing. for the skin and the hair too. They use and it the as hair. shampoo. And now we're talking. This is tropical. This is what the islanders, the Lemurians, right? This is yes. ancient and simple stuff. Coconut, coconut yes. jar. Yeah. As, as, as is the honey, and the honey is best if they can, uh, if they get it at the health food store because it's raw. Yeah. Raw honey, of course, is better because it doesn't have the fillers as opposed to getting it at the grocery store and it has all these other fillers that your body does not, cannot break down as well. Yeah. So uh, raw honey is really good. People who love oatmeal, go ahead and put the raw honey in there or the cinnamon, but the raw honey work very well for people with arthritis, and I actually have that in my book, too. It helps a lot of people. I've gotten people to start using it with their tea, and we're talking within maybe a month, they start noticing a difference of their joints and how they can flex their joints much better. We're talking raw honey here. In tea. Honey yes, in tea. Put honey in tea or honey in their oatmeal. There's so many wonderful ways to use these products in, in, in your everyday life, in what you're already doing. But what you're doing now is instead of using sugar, <laughs> yes. you're actually using something that's working with your body. As a, as, as, you know, 
instead of working against your body, it's working for your body. So what else do you eat? What's your favorite diet? Well, uh, my favorite is salmon. I love salmon, and I get wild salmon. Uh, I get it. I like Trader Joe's because I can get it frozen and wild. And um, but I actually, because I work for Alaska Airlines, <laughs> yeah. I can actually get it from Alaska when I go there and bring it home, have it packaged. But of course, like you know, when I'm not flying, I, I can get it at Trader Joe's. And uh, I like salmon. That's my that's the highest amount of protein I get. And uh, the way I use it, I actually bake it, you know, bake my salmon. I, I, I bake probably once a week I'll bake two nice-sized pieces. And then I'll cut it up. In the morning I'll cut it and I'll make, like, I'll put it in my scrambled eggs. And I'll have, um, and I'll wrap it in a tortilla, a wheat tortilla wrap. And sometimes that's my breakfast, of, of, you know, a salmon wrap with eggs, and, and I, I add things in there. I add, like, um, I love my veggies, so I will put in sautéed spinach and uh, tomatoes. So, you know, that's kind of a fun, uh, that's an easy breakfast for me to do, and that's one of my favorite breakfasts. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes I'll do, if I want it as a sandwich, I'll actually uh, I'll just, you know, make myself an egg and put it on top of the salmon and make, a, a, you know, a salmon and egg sandwich. Sometimes uh, do that for breakfast. And then for lunch, my lunch is more like a brunch. Uh, uh, I kind of eat lunch later in the day just because I, I start my mornings off with a protein drink and yogurt so that my breakfast is actually later. My breakfast probably doesn't even... I don't even have my breakfast until about 10 because I've already had protein drink and yogurt in the morning earlier. Um, I love uh, salmon salad. So I just, uh, sometimes I'll have, uh, you know, I'll just choose the different types of lettuce and have, uh, cut, you know, cut up the salmon and put it on top. So, you know, I love that. And then... For dinner, I pretty much just eat raw. That will be, I'll just cut up um, celery, carrot, broccoli, um, you know, a few, a few different veggies. And I cut up a, a large plate of different veggies and cover it up so that, you know, for the, for the next three days, all I have to do is take from that whichever ones I want. Mm -hmm. and have that for dinner. Um, and I have a um, green drink. So I like juicing. I like um, spinach, parsley, and celery, and I add apple because then it gives it some taste. But I love getting the greens in because when we fly, we just don't get enough greens. So that when I'm home, I really get, I really do it up. Um, what I can do and what I do is take, if I'm not flying international, I actually uh, put in a, a nice little cooler, I actually take my veggies, raw veggies with me so that I can snack on them uh, while I'm in, in between taking care of my passengers. <laughs> yes. I run in the galley and, you know, snack on my veggies. This diet, it's great, but what happens when you do get that little nudge for something sweet. And most of the time, if, if it comes, it's, it's, I'm flying. Maybe by the third day of flying, yeah, I think I want just something to, it's almost like a nurturing yourself. Yeah, like comfort oh, yeah. food. <laughs> uh, but, you know, I don't eat a, I, I, I'm going to say my favorite would be like uh, some kind of cookie, like a, a Milano cookie or something like that. Yeah. Chocolate, chocolate is my favorite, but I don't, I really don't like chocolate candy as much as I do a piece of chocolate cake. You are human. You still like to have a little oh, bit of that. Oh, <laughs> yes. I love chocolate. The health food store, because my health food store is a mother's market, and they have a restaurant, so obviously I can get their chocolate cakes and everything is made with natural ingredients and, you know, juice, you know, made with the juice and all the health, healthy stuff. And it's 
they're good too. And that's what I eat when I'm home. But if I'm on the road, I will have a piece of cake wherever I am. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I will so, have a piece of, I mean, it's just, you know, it's a nurturing thing. So absolutely. And I, I'm real big in teas. I love my herbal teas. But every once in a while, I just want a good cup of coffee. Yeah. And uh, and I think because I, I don't drink coffee much anymore, I really can't handle it. Literally, it it gives me too much energy. Mm-hmm. So I can have at um, Starbucks, I, I actually have um, cafe mocha decaf. That's yes. pretty funny. So I still get the chocolate, but it's, at least the coffee part is decaf. That's uh, about once a month. I just say, okay, it's it's time for me to to have have a mocha and just and just nurture me. So yeah, because you uh, do all of these things to stay forever young, because that's what we want. And and you know, when you we know that's not an age, that's really an attitude. Mm. But uh, at the same time, we live and walk and breathe on this earth, and we interact. And we want to enjoy ourselves. But we want to do as much as we can to create balance in our lives. And that really balance. starts with, it, it really is balance. That starts with doing these little things, uh, using these reference guides that I write about when you know you, you, when you hit a point where you're really, really in balance, you want to know what to do quickly to get rebalanced. And sometimes that may just be using milk thistle for a few days to cleanse your liver. Or it may have to be using a, a detox formula, you know, for about a week. And, I mean, everything has to do with how imbalanced you allow yourself to get mm-hmm. um, so that you know, okay, I, I just need to do this right now. Um, that's what it's all about, Lauren, in all of in all of these situations, it's about balance. Is there anything else, any other little tip or secret that we might not have got to? I know there's liver flushes and kidney and the colonics. That would just be with your local colonic hydrotherapist. Uh, if you're not already doing this, if you haven't already been doing cleansings and things, you're not comfortable trying this on your own. Trust me on that. There, I mean... There are flight attendants who go, are you kidding me? There is no way I would do it. And they're telling the truth because they haven't, they're just starting out. They're just, you know, to get them to sit in the bathtub is very easy to do the baking soda and the Epsom salt because they already love sitting in the bathtub because it, it calms you. Mm-hmm. And, you know, to get them to try something as simple as, uh, you know, the milk thistle, and then after about three or four days, and they feel the difference, they, they tell you, wow, you know, I think I want to start now, they want to add the sea powder, like you're talking about, the emergency. Hey, now I've got more energy with the emergency. Well, um, I really, I'm going to say acupuncture is one of my favorite alternative methods that I've uh, shared with flight personnel because it has helped so many men with back pain and it's helped so many women with menopause and to relieve stress. Mm -hmm. Huge, huge. If, I mean, here's the difference. I talked some of these flight attendants into trying um, acupuncture, I, you know, the doctors, I, I obviously give you websites and, uh, for people to go to to find their own uh, acupuncture doctor as opposed to where they are. But um, once they tried it, some of these girls were, were spending anywhere from five to $700 a month on hormone replacement therapies. Yeah. And it, it, they are now spending, are you ready for this? They're spending $12 to $60 a month on herbs usable from the acupuncture doctor and seeing the acupuncturist once or twice a month. So instead of spending five to $700 a month, they're, they're not even spending $100. they are spending about 60 to 80 max. 
that is huge on your savings and it's huge for your body and it lets you go buy those organic foods yeah again it's just a rethinking of of how we choose to spend our our money how is your friend is she totally healed from this oh that's 25 years ago she she was on she was a different person within a couple of months within a year she she went on to just her life changed dramatically uh, it well she changed other people's lives too because she gave them hope by what she did yes and she got involved with uh, herbs and going out and um, doing volunteer work at different places that uh, talked about cancer prevention and so forth. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes. But because of that uh, situation, I ended up helping, I'm going to say, about eight different women, women to try these other methods and to use apply kinesiologists, and those women also put their cancers in remission. So I know this stuff works. Excellent. That is so great. And I know that people are listening, and if they've got any questions, do you do private sessions with people? Are you counseling as well? You know what? I'm not just because I'm busy working towards my master's degree, my dear. (laughs) Right on. I'm working toward my master's in holistic healing. So, uh, but my uh, my book is on Amazon. So put in Forever Young and put Ella next to it. It pops right up. Forever yes. Young, Ella pops right up. On um, the back of my book is my email. I have a personal email, and I do answer questions. I have not put together the blog just because I'm doing so much work with my master's right now. I am going to eventually, I'm going to say, you know, probably... A, you know, the second or third month of uh, the new year, I will, I'll be close enough to being finished that I can go ahead and put together a blog. But a lot of people contact me via my email and people write me on Facebook because I'm on Facebook and I answer questions and I send them places. And a really good resource is INHA. I'm a member of that. That is the International Natural Healers Association. That is an amazing resource center for contacting healers, doctors, and teachers all over the world. The Western medical tradition, Western doctors are moving more and more to these alternative therapists. We're going to see a nice change to that that healthcare industry. But as you said today, Ella, it begins with each of us first. So thank you so much for being on Healing Conversations. Is there any last little step or advice you'd like to share? You know, Lauren, yes. Actually, uh, I in the back of my book, I gave some really good feng shui tips because I think it's so important for people to balance their homes. And if I could say anything that has changed people's ener- lives energetically and financially, is to clear the clutter. Things that you do not need that are working, please donate, share with someone else. Just yes. something that simple in your home. I've had people that, you know, flight attendants, we shop all over the world, and we have clothes from everywhere. And I've taught these women, and I said, you know what, go through your closet and look at things that you know you haven't worn in the last five or ten years and give them away and see what happens to your life. Lauren, amazing things happen when you share what you have. I mean, packing up these nice things that you have, donating them at your Salvation Army or any of those places, giving things to people who... First of all, they may never get to that part of the world where you purchase these things from. And secondly, they probably could never afford to buy what you, you know, bought for yourself, uh, what you bought for yourself. Sharing things, Lauren, is huge for clearing the energy in your home, which in turn clears the energy in your life, which in turn really frees up uh, the energy for your finances to come in abundantly. 
Wow, that's a good tip. And you know they have said if you want to be rich, give away all your stuff. Now, stuff that you no longer need. We don't have to give up everything, but that's a great no. point. Stuff that we don't need. You know, instead of having a garage sale and waiting for that sale, give it to the, yeah, give it to Salvation Army or donate it to the charities. Yeah, oh, yes, yes. Literally, Lauren, I was on my way to the Salvation Army with clothes and, uh, you know, one before Christmas. And I do a house cleaning for Christmas. Like, right before Christmas, I go through my closet, and I call my son, and I say, do you have anything you haven't worn in the last few years? Check your closet. Your mom's going to, you know, I do that, and I call my neighbors. And I tell them, I'm going, do you have anything you want? I'll, I'll put it in my car and take it for you. And I had a car load of stuff, and I was walking into the Salvation Army, and I saw this family walking in, and this, this girl was teenage girl, really cute as a button, and tiny, and just cute as a button, and I looked at her and her mom, and I said, excuse me, you look like a cute little size six, and she said, I am. I said, well, sweetheart, I've got some cute things that I'm getting ready to donate. I would rather give them to you, and I took her back to my car, and I let her choose everything that she wanted first, and her mom, and then I took the rest in. Oh, that is a miracle in her life. Yeah. I think you've changed her life. Well, how, but you know what, how good did it make me feel? I mean, I was already going to donate it, and yes, they sell it for a small amount of money, but my God, how yeah. wonderful how was wonderful. that to, to just give it to somebody. Yeah. Oh my God, Lauren, these people were hugging me and hugging me. I, I felt, I'm telling you, I was just walking light. <laughs> <laughs> I felt, I just, and it doesn't take much to make it doesn't take much to feel good and to make others feel good. We can do this, Lauren. We can change this world. We can change this world. And it doesn't, we don't have to wait for grandiose, huge things to happen. No, we can change it with every gesture like you've shown us in this conversation today. Yes, sweetheart. And guess what? We can have our cake. <laughs> and eat it too. <laughs> <laughs> We can still have cake. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Lauren, so oh, much. Thank you. How wonderful. Thank you <laughs> for your wonderful work and the gift that you're sharing with all of us. And thank you, too, for listening to this Healing Conversation Summer Series of 2012. Please like our Facebook page, and be sure to share this program with your friends and family so we can get this important information out to the rest of the world. I now leave you with music from the universe, literally created by the universe as computer music researcher Phil Windsor assigned musical notes to mathematical equations. And the result is this beautiful music available at AcousticHealth.com You're invited to join this online healing retreat with Christine Day of the Pleiadian Light Initiations. 
as we activate the new crystalline structure that was birthed on 11-11-11. We're going to be working with the new crystalline structure that's actually birthing in the space between the cells at this new dawning time. The Pleiadians call this the new dawning and the Earth is going through a, a birthing in consciousness but we are also part of this new dawning process and we are going through a birthing of consciousness and physical transformation within our own bodies. And on 11-11-11, a crystalline structure was birthed through each one of our cells in the space between the cells. And it's now time to activate that crystalline structure that creates an accelerated awakening of your own realignment and remembering process to your divine aspect. So in this two-hour workshop, what I'll be doing is talking at length about the crystalline structure so everybody really gets to understand what that, what that is, so they can really open up, because it's about a conscious um, activation, a conscious activation of your own crystalline structure. And the Pleiadians actually give you sacred sounds, and we'll be working with these sacred sounds in the workshop. What you'll be doing is, as you um, activate the sacred sound, you activate your own unique frequency or divine energy through that sound. And the crystalline structure within your body responds to that, and you begin to birth and open into the crystalline structure, which actually gives you a new electrical energy through your body to be able to earth your own divine energy through the cells of your body. So this is a really profound experience and we're going to be working within the crystalline structure in the brain which activates telepathic communication. We're going to be working with the crystalline structure through the heart which births the sacred heart's energy as a receiving station for yourself to be able to align to your own intuition more, align to your divine aspect more and interact with the spiritual realms in that telepathic communication and allows you to be able to receive on a whole new level through your sacred heart. We're also going to be working through the thyroid because the thyroid is holding that crystalline structure and the thyroid's crystalline structure holds and activates the divine factor of yourself. So we're going to be moving and working with the sacred sounds. I'm going to be transmitting these light initiations from the Pleiadians to assist you for an integration and we also anchor an energetic grid that creates a four-fifth dimensional energy around you to enable you to be able to integrate yourself. And this is really an empowering process, a self-empowering process of you birthing you. So it's going to be really transformative. It's going to, there's going to be very strong integration and we're going to be receiving the new dimensional levels of yourself during this really empowering and powerful process. Please join us in this new dawning as we activate ourselves for an accelerated awakening. Register at AcousticHealth.com slash day dot htm. That's AcousticHealth.com slash day dot htm.